A pure monopoly means that there is only one producer of the good with no close substitutes being produced by any other firms. Since the firm is the industry, they have a great deal of control over the price that is charged for their good. Monopolies are created and sustained due to strong entry barriers, which makes it very difficult for new firms to enter the industry. There is very little non-price competition, since there are not any rival firms. However, there may be some non-price competition to increase the demand for the good. Pure monopolies are rare, but many examples of near monopolies exist. Examples of monopoly or near monopolies today include the gas company, electric company, and the cable TV company. Private companies such as Intel, which enjoys 80% of the market for microprocessors, and Whammo, which has 90% of the market for Frisbees, provide examples near monopolies. Even professional sports teams may enjoy being a monopoly in their respective geographical area. Of course, there is almost always some competition, even for these firms. Economies of scale constitute one major barrier. This occurs where the lowest unit costs, and therefore lowest unit prices, for consumers depend on the existence of a small number of large firms, or in the case of a pure monopoly, only one firm. Because a very large firm with a very large market share is most efficient, new firms cannot afford to start up in industries with economies of scale. Google and Amazon both enjoy economies of scale in their respective markets. 1. Public utilities are often natural monopolies because they have economies of scale in the extreme case where one firm is most efficient in satisfying the entire demand. 2. Government usually gives one firm the right to operate a public utility industry in exchange for government regulation of its power. Legal barriers to entry into a monopolistic industry also exist in the form of patents and licenses. 1. Patents grant the inventor the exclusive right to produce or license a product for 20 years. This exclusive right can earn profits for future research, which results in more patents and monopoly profits. 2. Licenses are another form of entry barrier. Radio and TV stations and taxi companies are examples of government granting licenses where only one or a few firms are allowed to offer the service. Ownership or control of essential resources is another barrier to entry. 1. International Nickel Company of Canada, now called INCO, used to control about 90% of the world's nickel reserves, and De Beers of South Africa controls most of the world's diamond supply. See last word. 2. Professional sports leagues control player contracts and leases on major city stadiums. Monopolists may use pricing or other strategic barriers, such as selective price cutting and advertising. Dense Ply, manufacturer of false teeth, controlled about 70% of the market. In 2005, Dense Ply was found to have illegally prevented distributors from carrying competing brands. 2. Microsoft charged higher prices for its Windows operating system to computer manufacturers featuring Netscape Navigator instead of Microsoft's Internet Explorer. U.S. courts ruled this action illegal. A declining long-run average total cost curve over a wide range of output quantities indicates extensive economies of scale. A single monopoly firm can produce, say, 200 units of output at lower cost, $10 each, than could two or more firms that had a combined output of 200 units. The following analysis of monopoly demand makes three assumptions. The monopoly is secured by patents, economies of scale, or resource ownership. The firm is not regulated by any unit of government. The firm is a single price monopolist. It charges the same price for all units of output. Note, there is not a monopolistic supply curve. Price will exceed marginal revenue because the monopolist must lower the price to sell the additional unit. The lower price is applied to all of the units being produced, not just the last unit, thereby causing marginal revenue to be less than price. The added revenue will be the price of the last unit less the sum of the price cuts, which must be taken on all prior units of output.
A pure monopolist, or any other imperfect competitor with a downsloping demand curve, such as D, must set a lower price in order to sell more output. Here, by charging $132 rather than $142, the monopolist sells an extra unit, the fourth unit, and gains $132 from that sale. But from this gain must be subtracted $30, which reflects the $10 less the monopolist charge for each of the first three units. Thus, the marginal revenue of the fourth unit is $102, $132 minus $30 considerably less than its $132 price. MR is less than price after the first unit sold. A price maker is a firm with pricing power, which is the ability of the firm to set its own price. The monopolist sets the price in the elastic region of the demand curve so that revenues will be higher and costs slower. The monopolist avoids setting the price in the inelastic range of demand because doing so would reduce total revenue and increase costs. Total revenue, TR, increases at a decreasing rate, reaches a maximum, and then declines. Note that in the elastic region, TR is increasing and hence MR is positive. When TR reaches its maximum, MR is zero. This graph reflects the demand, marginal revenue, and total revenue for a pure monopolist. Because it must lower price on all units sold in order to increase its sales, an imperfectly competitive firm's marginal revenue curve, MR, lies below its downsloping demand curve, D. The elastic and inelastic regions of demand are highlighted. Note that in the elastic region, TR is increasing and hence, MR is positive. When TR reaches its maximum, MR is zero. In the inelastic region of demand, TR is declining, so MR is negative. Notice there is no supply curve for the monopolist. There is no unique relationship between price and quantity supplied for the monopolist. The MR equals MC rule will tell the monopolist where to find its profit maximizing output level. This can be seen in Table 12.1 and Figure 12.4. The same result can be found by comparing total revenue and total costs incurred at each level of production. The pure monopolist has no supply curve because there is no unique relationship between price and quantity supplied. The price and quantity supplied will always depend on the location of the demand curve. This graph demonstrates profit maximization by a pure monopolist. The pure monopolist maximizes profit by producing at the MR equals MC output. Here, QM equals 5 units. Then, as seen from the demand curve, it will charge price PM equals $122. Average total cost will be A equals $94, meaning that per unit profit is PM minus A, and total profit is 5 times PM minus A. Total economic profit is thus represented by the green rectangle. The monopolist does not charge the highest possible price because the monopolist can't sell much output at that price and profits are too low. The monopolist is interested in total profit, not per unit profit. There is always the possibility that the monopolist will earn losses. Monopolists are not protected from changes in demand nor from changes in costs. If demand, D, is weak and costs are high, the pure monopolist may be unable to make a profit. Because PM exceeds V, the average variable cost at the MR equals MC output QM, the monopolist will minimize losses in the short run by producing at that output. The loss per unit is A minus PM, and the total loss is indicated by the red rectangle. In this set of graphs, we will compare the inefficiency of pure monopoly relative to a purely competitive industry. In a purely competitive industry, entry and exit of firms ensures that price, PC, equals marginal cost, MC, at the minimum average total cost output, where QC is produced. Both productive efficiency, P equals minimum ATC, and allocative efficiency, P equals MC, are obtained. Here at QC. In pure monopoly, the MR curve lies below the demand curve. 
the monopolist maximizes profit at output QM, where MR equals MC and charges price PM. Thus output is lower, QM rather than QC, and price is higher, PM rather than PC, than they would be in a purely competitive industry. Monopoly is inefficient since output is less than that required for achieving maximum ATC, here at QC, and because the monopolist's price exceeds MC. Monopoly creates an efficiency loss, here triangle ABC. There is also a transfer of income from consumers to the monopoly, here rectangle PC PM BD. Income distribution is more unequal than it would be under a more competitive situation. The effect of the monopoly power is to transfer income from the consumers to the business owners. This will result in a redistribution of income in favor of higher income business owners, unless the buyers of monopoly products are wealthier than the monopoly owners. Costs Complications Costs for monopolies may not be the same as for more competitive firms. Following are four reasons why costs may differ. Economies of scale may result in one or two firms operating in an industry experiencing low ATC than the competitive firms. These economies of scale may be the result of spreading large initial capital cost over a large number of units of output, natural monopoly, or more recently, spreading product development costs over units of output and a greater specialization of inputs. Some firms have been able to achieve extensive economies of scale due to the ability to produce a single product that many consumers can simultaneously enjoy, like products that once produced can be downloaded over the Internet. Also, network effects can be a factor that gives rise to monopoly power. Network effects occur when the value of a product rises as the total number of users rise. An example would be computer software or Facebook. The more people that use it, the more benefits of the product to each person using it. People tend to use products that everyone else is using. X inefficiency may occur in monopoly since there is no competitive pressure to produce at the minimum possible costs. See next slide for graph. Rent-seeking behavior often occurs as monopolies seek to acquire or maintain government-granted monopoly privileges at someone else's expense. Such rent-seeking may entail substantial costs, lobbying, legal fees, public relations, advertising, etc., which are inefficient. Technological progress and dynamic efficiency may occur in some monopolistic industries but not in others. The evidence is mixed. Some monopolies have shown little interest in technological progress. On the other hand, research can lead to lower unit costs, which help monopolies as much as any other type of firm. Also, research can help the monopoly maintain its barriers to entry against new firms. The average total cost curve, ATC, is assumed to reflect the minimum cost of producing each particular level of output. Any point above this lowest cost ATC curve, such as X or X apostrophe, implies X inefficiency operation at a greater cost than the lowest cost possible for a particular level of output. When monopoly power results in an adverse effect upon the economy, the government may choose to intervene on a case-by-case -case basis using antitrust laws. If the government feels that it is more beneficial to society to have a monopoly, then government will regulate it. Although there are legitimate concerns of the effects of monopoly power on the economy, Monopoly power is not widespread. While research and technology may strengthen monopoly power, over time it is likely to destroy monopoly position. Competition from foreign multinational corporations diminishes the market power of firms in the United States. Here are just a few of the hundreds of foreign multinational corporations that compete strongly with U.S. firms in certain American markets. Price discrimination is defined as charging different buyers different prices when such price differences are not justified by cost differences. Monopoly power means that the firm must have some pricing power. Pricing power is the ability of a firm to set its own price. Therefore, we find price discrimination in all types of markets except perfect competition. Business travelers have relatively inelastic demand due to no time to shop around and wait. 
Also, the firm is paying for this business trip, and whenever someone else pays for your consumption, you are not as concerned about the price. Therefore, airlines charge business travelers higher prices than the rest of the population. Hotels will charge the business traveler higher rates than the rest of the population. Movie theaters charge higher prices for the evening show than for an afternoon matinee. This is because those going to the matinee are more price sensitive than the rest of the population. Those going to the matinee may be retired, families with children, or unemployed people. Those going to the evening show often consider this a special event and are willing to pay full price, or perhaps they are too busy working during the day to go to a matinee. This group will be less price sensitive. Also, movie theaters charge adults a higher price than children, even though it costs the same amount to show a movie to an adult as to a child. This effort will bring in more people and more revenue, because otherwise a family might not be able to afford to bring all members to the show. Those who have the time and take the time to clip coupons and manage coupons are the price-sensitive group. Those who do not take the time are those willing to pay regular price. The price-discriminating monopolist represented here maximizes its total profit by dividing the market into two segments based on differences in elasticity of demand. It then produces and sells at the MR equals MC output in each market segment. For visual clarity, average total cost, ATC, is assumed to be constant. Therefore, MC equals ATC at all output levels. A. The price discriminating monopolist charges a high price to small business customers because they have a relatively inelastic demand curve for the product. B. The firm charges a low price to students because their demand curve is relatively elastic. The firm's total profit, the sum of the two green rectangles, exceeds the profit that would have occurred had the monopolist charged the same price to all customers. When monopoly power results in an adverse effect upon the economy, the government may choose to intervene on a case-by-case -case basis. Government usually intervenes when they feel that the monopoly is a natural monopoly. The dilemma for regulators is whether to choose a socially optimal price, where P equals MC, or a fair return price, where P equals ATC. P equals MC is most efficient but may result in losses for the monopoly firm, at which point the government would have to subsidize the firm for it to survive. P equals ATC does not achieve allocative efficiency, but does ensure a fair return, normal profit, for the firm. The socially optimal price, PR, found where D and MC intersect, will result in an efficient allocation of resources, but may entail losses to the monopoly. The fair return price, PF, will allow the monopolist to break even, but will not fully correct the underallocation of resources. Google's success stems from being first to create an effective search engine. Advertisers seeking to advertise online are attracted to Google because of the large number of users. Facebook benefits from being first as well as having the most followers on its site. Being so popular results in it growing even bigger. Amazon's site has allowed it to build massive distribution warehouses that help speed delivery to customers. They also have built massive server farms to store all kinds of data in order to improve their customers' experience while on the Amazon website. Of course, there is no guarantee that these companies will dominate their respective industries forever.